Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft editor tutorial. Yay! Yes, I know what you're thinking, but I haven't yet. <laughs> As of right now, I'm not actually at 100k, I'm at 99,700, so I'm really close. But I'm presuming by the time that this video goes up, I will have 100,000 subs. I'm just trying not to get too excited because I have a tutorial to do firstly, and of course we do have a 100k special very soon. So I'm just trying to hold back my emotions just a little bit, but I'm just about to hit 100k subscribers and I'm gonna get a silver play button and it's gonna be mad and I'm gonna do a boat reveal and it's gonna be amazing. Oh! Genuinely, I'm so excited. Anyway, like I said, I have a tutorial to do. Now, in this video, we're actually doing two tutorials. I know, I'm so generous. <laughs> <sighs> Why do I do it to myself? <laughs> so what exactly are the two tutorials? Well, let's just take one at a time. Firstly, we have an under over door trap. So here is our under over door trap. Now just taking a look at the redstone first. Just, just look at it. <laughs> it's so nice and compact and really, really small. Now I'm guessing you already know how this build works, but I just want to show you in first person because it is so cool. <laughs> so if you don't place anything in this chest or barrel and go forward, then sadly you are going to be trapped. Obviously you can have a trap down here, a hole, whatever you like. If you place in the wrong item in this barrel, for example, a piece of stone, then unfortunately the outcome is going to be the same. Whee! All the way down. But if you place in the correct item, basically the key which you've already decided before, for example, this one is a diamond, then our under over door is not a trap anymore, and this is just a normal under over door. But of course, it's going to reset every time, so the next time someone uses it and tries to go forward, they're going to get trapped. <laughs> How cool is that? And of course, the key can be whatever you like. In this case, I have used diamonds, but it can be diamonds, it can be gold, it can be sponges if you really wanted to. It really does not matter. Oh, and by the way, all the junk that goes into this barrel goes into this chest, and all the diamonds go into this chest here. So I was all set to do this build completely ready, but then I showed this build to my brother. Now, the majority of my builds I showed to my brother first. Firstly, because he likes my redstone, I think. <laughs> I hope. And secondly, I think it's really good to test if a build works on a multiplayer game. But this is when he came up with a genius idea. He said, why don't you invert it? What he was implying was this, that the build is a normal under over door. So every time you use it, you go down along of an up like a normal under over door. But when you place in the right item into the barrel or chest, then it doesn't shoot you up, but you fall down into a secret base. When he said this, just our minds were blown. <laughs> and this is what we came up with. As you can see, it's exactly the same size as the last one. Really, really nice and small. And it is just so cool. <laughs> so a massive thank you to my brother for this idea because it is brilliant. So if you want to show him some love in the comment section below, I'm sure they appreciate it. <laughs> and of course, like the first build, it resets itself every single time. So even if someone has just gone down into their secret base and then you try and follow them, well then you can't. You just get launched back up every single time. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna split this tutorial up. So firstly, we're gonna do a tutorial just on the under over door and the payment system. And then the video is going to split two ways. <laughs> One being the under over door and trap. And the second way being the under over door and I can't remember what it's called. And the second way being the under over door and secret entrance. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with these tutorials. Now, for those of you who are gathering up items in survival, that is a jukebox. I know it's weird, but you need it. And I'll explain why later, okay? Also the 18 diamonds, that is your payment method. So that can be whatever you like. It doesn't have to be diamonds. Obviously you'll probably want more than 18, but 18 is just for the build. And then there's four dirt blocks. That is basically four random blocks you're never gonna put into your system. And of course, like normal, the question mark is decoration blocks. Nice bit of music. Very chill. Okay, to start this build, what I need to do is to have a doorway like this. And that's it. This is a really every time I start recording cave noises. So you need to start with a doorway. So this is the outside of your build. Okay, so the garden, <laughs> the outside, and this is the inside. This will be inside your room. Does that make sense? So if this is the outside, that's the inside. So your door is going to go here. 
It's on this block and it's on this side. So this is the outside, that's the inside. Okay, so after you've done that, what we just do is do some digging. So dig out one, two, three, four blocks in front of your door. Then one block to the left of this block and two blocks from the right of this block. And then three blocks from the back of here. One, two, three. And then what I want you to do is just make this a nice large rectangle. Of course, we're going to be digging out far more than we'll ever need for the redstone. But it's just to give yourself a little bit of breathing room. So what you should have now is a one, two, three, four, five, six perfect by eight long hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. But at the moment, of course, this hole is only one deep and it needs to be seven deep. So you need to dig this out six more times. So now you should have a six by eight by seven deep hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fantastic. <laughs> so now what I want you to do is to place an outside block here. So of course, this is the outside. So this is the block is going to be moved on the outside and then a block to be moved on the inside. I'm going to be using spruce wood, but you can use whatever you like as long as it's a movable block. So this block is going to be moved and so is this one. Does that make sense? <laughs> right, now you've done that, we need to place in the pistons which are actually going to be moving those two blocks. So come down one, two, three underneath this block, remove the first two and have a sticky piston facing upward, like so. Two blocks out from this one and then two sticky pistons up like this, one and two. And remove these three, one, two and three. And then you need to do the same as that but off this block here. So come down one, two, three, remove the first two, sticky piston facing upward, two blocks to the right if you're looking toward the front of the door, and then two sticky pistons like so, and then remove these three blocks here. One, two, three. Now these pistons extending and retracting is super, super simple. Basically, these pistons retract first, moving their blocks down, then these pistons move them back, like that, meaning that we can fall down here. We get launched across with a slime block and then launch back up. And as we're getting launched back up, boing, <laughs> this uh, lever turns on, but it can't do anything at the moment because these pistons are not in line with this block. And then this one fires, moving those pistons across. And of course, they're going to be immediately extended because that block is powered. Obviously, we're not going to have a block here, but that is basically the principle and how it works. Now, before we wire up any of these pistons, we need to work out where our pressure plate is going to go. Now, of course, this block is going to be extended over, then up. So that block is going to go here. So our pressure plate has to go here on this block here. Make sure you remove that block there. So that is our pressure plate for our door. Brilliant. <laughs> After you've done that, place a block down and then place a jukebox here. <laughs> And I know that is strange, but you need to place a jukebox there and remove this block and then crouch and place dust on the jukebox. The reason we have a jukebox is firstly because we have slime underneath it and a jukebox is immovable, but also a jukebox is transparent because when these pistons are here and this one's up like that, when this one retracts, we want this one to retract as we're on this pressure plate. So if this was a full block, when that dust is on, it would actually be powering that piston and that will never do because of course, then it would never go down. So it needs to be both a transparent block and an immovable, sorry. So it needs to be a transparent block firstly and an immovable block. Hence, we use a jukebox. Very, very strange. <laughs> so like we said, as we press on the pressure plate, that dust turns on. Now that dust is going to be going along a slab. So make sure you crouch and place it like this on the top side of that block. A block here and dust on both, one and two. Place a block to the right, one, two up, remove the first two and place a piston going downward. So make sure it's a sticky piston. <laughs> remove the top block. On the face of our sticky piston, place a block of redstone. So as we go on this pressure plate, that piston extends, moving the block of redstone down. Brilliant. Place a block here, one down, one toward the back, remove the first two and then dust goes here. So as that piston extends, this redstone block moves to here, powering that dust, which after four ticks is going to power into a repeater. So place the repeater down and press it three times, once, twice, and thrice. <laughs> I know you love me saying that word. <laughs> then place a block in front, a block up. That repeater is going to power into this block. And then you need to grab a torch, place it here, which is extending these two pistons, 
and then a final block on top. So as this dust turns on, this piston extends, moving this redstone block down to here. That dust turns on. After four ticks, this block gets powered, unpowering this torch, unpowering these pistons, unpowering this block, unpowering these pistons. Like this. And then of course, after I let go, after about five ticks, they extend. Okay, so now we've wired up these pistons, we need to wire up these pistons here to extend when they're like this. So we do that by placing a torch off the side of this block, this, uh, this block with the dust on it, perfect. A block here and one below. Remove this block and have some dust coming away from that torch, which should turn on. Then place a temporary block here. Then place a piece of obsidian. I know that sounds strange at the moment because obviously nothing is needing an obsidian, but it does later. <laughs> so make sure you do place it. And then on top of that obsidian, place a block. On top of this torch, which should be off, you need to place another block. And then a torch here, which should extend. So now we've got these powered and you may think that's it. But sadly it's not, <laughs> because if we do this, you can see they get extended here, which obviously would break our flooring. That's because when they're getting moved back, because that torch is turning off, then they would get retracted. That block there is actually being powered by the torch underneath it, which means those pistons are extended. So this is the tricky part. We need to find a way for this block to be powered, so the torch unpowers, so these pistons can retract, and then move back, but as they move back, then the block needs to unpower again, allowing that torch to turn on, because if that block is powered, then those pistons extend when they're here. <laughs> but the solution is really, really simple. Literally, place a block here, a block down, and dust. And that will work. You can see that torch is turned on again, and that block is now unpowered, because that dust underneath there, is powering that obsidian when these move back, un making this torch unpower, unpowering this block again, allowing our torch to turn on. You see there, it's only off for a very brief second. It's really, really close. Now, just to demonstrate that, I placed a block here, but you actually need to remove that, place a block down, and have a sticky piston going toward the front with dust on it like that. It will do exactly the same, but we need that piston for later. <laughs> okay, our next thing to do is to place in the pistons, which are gonna fire us across. <laughs> so we need to place a piston directly underneath this slab facing toward the back. Hence we use a slab, because if we use the full block, then that piston would get extended, obviously. On the face of that piston, we need our slime block. Then place a temporary block underneath the slime and a piece of obsidian here which we're going to land on. Make sure you remove this block, otherwise it will not work. One more piece of obsidian, a block underneath, a piston facing upward, remove this block, and a slime. Now this is the piston which is going to fire us back up. So now we need to wire up these two pistons. Now thankfully that is very, very simple. Come back over to this piston with the dust on it, and on the face of the piston, place an observer with a dot going toward the uh, front of our build. Place a temporary block here, one out, remove this one, make sure you remove that one. <laughs> On this block, have a torch. Coming away from that torch, have our observer, and then have a block here. So after this repeater on four ticks gets powered, which obviously turns that torch off, meaning these pistons retract, this dust is gonna turn on, which is gonna power our piston, moving this observer to here. When that observer moves, it's going to pulse naturally, <laughs> causing this block to pulse very quickly, causing this torch to turn off and then on, very, very quickly. When that happens, this observer detects that, firing into this block just in time. As we are falling, this piston extends, moving this slime block here, punching us over to here. Like this. Brilliant. And to wire up this piston, it's really, really simple. Underneath this block here, place a sticky piston going toward the back. Have an observer coming away from that. So as that observer pulses into this block, this is going to fire this piston at the same time as this one, moving this observer. When it moves, it's going to pulse, and it's going to pulse into a block next to a pist sticky piston, extending it, pushing us back up. Now, this is the only thing you need to change for this bit. If you are doing the under over door, which is a trap, you need to place a rest on lamp instead of the block for later. But if you're doing the other one, the uh, under over door with secret entrance, then you can place a normal block, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter if you use a redstone lamp for both because it doesn't matter, but for the trap one, you do need 
a rest and lap. And that should be it completely done. Brilliant. And I've just destroyed the block. How clever am I? <laughs> and you could just leave it like that. If you just want a super tiny, and I mean super tiny, under over door, well, this will work fine. <laughs> but no, we want a bit more. We want to add the payment system and then the other cool features. So what we need to do is place a barrel or a chest or a shulker box, any storage container, container here, right next to our door. Underneath this chest or container, whatever you use, crouch and place a hopper going downward. Then place a block underneath and come out one, two blocks. Remove the first two and then have two hoppers going like this. One and two going into that block. Make sure you crouch when you place them and make sure they are going directly along into this block here. At the end of this hopper, have a chest. Now this is your rubbish chest. Basically, if anyone puts anything in which isn't your payment, it's going to go into this chest here. After you've done that, place a block underneath this chest again. Place another hopper going toward this one. And make sure it's going toward that block like that. And remove this block. Now, this is the strange part. Next to this piston, place a block. And underneath this block, we've got to place another jukebox. <laughs> like that. And then remove this block. And on top of this jukebox, we need a comparator coming away from that hopper. In front of that comparator, crouch and place a block. Come down two blocks like this. Remove this one and have dust. A block here underneath our jukebox and one down. Remove this one and dust. And this is why you need a jukebox. Firstly, because it's transparent. That dust and that dust are actually connecting, even though there's a block there. This, because this is basically acting like glass, it can just see straight through it. And of course, it has to be immovable because this line block is going to be moving. So that's why we have to use a jukebox. <laughs> now, next to this block, we need a piston facing upward. A block here. A hopper going toward that block. Make sure it's like that. And then remove this block. And instead of the block, crouch and place a chest, not there, here. <laughs> Right, now in this hopper, which is the comparator's taking the output from, you want 18 of your payment items. So whatever you're using for your payment, it doesn't matter, but you need 18. And you can see that comparator turns on. And then you need four random blocks you are never going to put into your system. You've got to make sure you are never going to put them in. So if you want to make it ultra secure, I would just rename some dirt something completely random, like Steve. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, one in each slot. Okay, the 18 of your payments and then four randoms. And that's it for the payment system. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but that is completely it. So how does this bit work, I hear you ask? Well, if you put a random item in here, for example, uh, this comparator, that comparator, as you see, was taken away from our barrel or chest. It goes into this hopper, moves down to here, then it moves along. Now, a hopper always will draw from the below first. So it will try and go into this hopper first. But it sees there is no room because it's not a diamond and it is not dirt. So it goes into this chest. If it were a diamond, then it would go into this and this would make it 19. When this hits 19, this comparator gives a signal strength of 2. 18 items and 4 randoms is a signal strength of 1. But as soon as one more item goes into that hopper, this will turn to 2. If I remove this hopper, you'll be able to see this. You see, that piston has just extended. Now, when that piston extends, it's going to move a hopper. When that hopper moves up, it's going to take the item. It's, going to start, it's actually going to start draining the hopper. But as soon as that hopper gets back to 18, this signal strength is going to go back to 1, retracting our piston and moving the hopper down, which makes that item go into this chest. Just like this. You see? Straight into that chest. You'll always only take the one item. Okay, so that's the under over door and payment system done. Now it's your choice. What do you want to build? Wow. You've chosen the trap. You want to be that mean to your friends? <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> to make the trap part, all you have to do is come around to the back here. And first you place another sticky piston, no, place a slime block out like this. So you should have two now. Now looking toward the back, come to this slime block and place one, two blocks out. Remove the first and then have a regular piston going like this toward this slime block. 
and we can remove this block here. Then, looking toward the back again, we want three blocks from the right of this line block. One, two, three. Remove the first two, and you guessed it, have a, a sticky, uh, a regular piston, sorry, going toward the slime block. Perfect. So the default with this build is to trap someone. So if you don't place any item through our chest, or if you're placing the wrong item, you're going to fall down here. But if you place in the right item, in my case, a diamond, then we need this piston to fire, moving our sticky pistons over, ready for you to be launched back up. Does that make sense? But then after every single time we use the under over door, we need to reset this piston just in case. So to wire up this system with this piston, all you have to do is first you place a block here, another one out and one up, and then dust here, one and two. Now you may notice that this dust is going to be powering this hopper, meaning this hopper is locked. Now, of course, we don't want that because obviously we want items going through here. So to change that, we need to place another block here, and then a lever. Or a button it doesn't matter just make sure it's off whatever it is and as you can see the dust is being redirected so nothing will get stuck here so if i place an item in here you'll see it goes along and into my chest perfect <laughs> just a cool little trick with the redirect there <laughs> so after you've done that come to this piston place a piece of obsidian here it needs to be an immovable block because of course this line block is going to be moving up on this obsidian have a repeater on one tick a block here, one on top of this piston, and dust. One and two. So if we were to place a diamond in here, when this goes to 19 very briefly, this dust will activate, powering this block, powering this repeater. So after the one tick, it's going to power into this dust, powering into this dust, powering this piston, moving this line block over to here, ready for you to be launched up. Like this. Diamond in here. And as you saw, it got moved over. So now when we use our under over door, we go through and we get fired up. Fantastic. But as you can see, it hasn't actually reset yet. So we need to find a way to fire this piston every time this build is used. And for those of you who may have a little bit of redstone knowledge, you might have guessed that is why we have the redstone lamp. So as this redstone lamp turns off, we need an observer detecting that, which is going to fire. As that observer fires, we need another observer detecting it firing. So as that one fires, then this one fires. And that's going to fire into a block, which is going to extend our piston, moving our slime blocks and our sticky piston over, resetting our build. So when I use this now, I should get launched up, but then it should reset itself. Fantastic. So if someone tries to follow me without placing a diamond in there, they're going to get an unwanted surprise. <laughs> Brilliant. And surprisingly, that is all the rest done completely done for our trap build. So if you want to, just place in some of our flooring blocks all over here, doesn't matter. And of course, you can build up the wall. Even on this side, just build up your flooring like that. And that's absolutely fine. And of course, if you want to make it a drop, then you can just clear out these blocks down here. And then someone's going to meet their <laughs> untimely demise. Wee! <laughs> and of course, if I don't mention it, someone is going to ask, place a button here if you want to get out this way. <laughs> now, if I place a diamond in here, we should have our normal under over door. Fantastic, and go out. But then if I don't place anything or I place a random item, like a piece of wood, then as I go through, I fall. <laughs> and of course, if you like, you can have this hopper going wherever you like. So if you want to move it over to a collection point, maybe up here, then feel free. Just place a chest on up here, have a um, item elevator going up, and then have the hoppers going into the item elevator. It's up to you. I've just put it down there because, well, I don't know where you want it. <laughs> You can make up your own mind, all right? Ah, <laughs> uh, you've chosen the kinder option. How nice. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is a really, really cool build. Actually, I think I might prefer it to the trap build. Maybe just a little bit. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> They're both really, really cool anyway. So anyway, to build a secret entrance, what you need to do is first you place a slime block at the back of this slime block. Then looking toward the back, come out one, two blocks with the first one and then have a regular piston going toward the slime block like that with this block. And again, looking toward the back of our build, come out one, two, three blocks to the right, remove these two, and then place another regular piston like so. Brilliant. Oh yes, and like I said before, if you're building this build, which is the, obviously if you're watching this, you are building this side, <laughs> you can remove this rest of the lamp and place a normal block. It doesn't matter. Now this system down here, these two pistons and slime block, 
is basically telling the build whether you want to go down or whether you want to go back up. If the slime blocks are here, naturally that block is going to get powered, which is obviously going to extend us up. If we pay an item and it gets accepted, going through this system here, then this piston is going to extend and retract, meaning then we can go back down. But after every single time we use this, we need this system to reset because of course we don't want people following us down here. So that's why we need this piston to fire after everything is done over here. Okay, let's tackle the easy part first. Firing this piston when this piston fires. And we do that basically with a sticky piston here. Now, as you can see, this sticky piston is extended at the moment. Now we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this block with a piece of glass and then have some dust on top, like so. So only when this dust turns on, when this goes to 19, this piston will extend and it's gonna extend an, an observer, which is going to move to here. And when it moves to here, it's going to fire. And guess what? It's gonna fire into this piston extending this piston and moving slime blocks over. Basically like this. Fantastic. So if we used it now, we are going to fall down into our secret base. Now you'll notice this part is only half done because as you can see, this build has not reset itself. So if someone follows us now, they are also going to go into our base and that we'll never do. <laughs> so we need to find a way, but after all these uh, pistons are extended again, to then finally extend this piston once more, moving these slime blocks over to here. Now we do that by placing a torch off the side of this piston here, which should turn off. Then have a sticky piston coming away from it like that. Have an observer facing downward on the face of that piston. So the dot going toward the ground and the face looking up toward the sky. Covering our dot, we need a piece of obsidian. A piston facing this way, a regular piston. A temporary block on its face. And then another observer here. And remove that block. And that's it. <laughs> so as we stand on this pressure plate and these pistons retract, that torch on the other side of that piston is going to be on. It's going to be turned on, which, as you can see, which is going to extend this piston, moving this observer to here, doing nothing. As we come off our pressure plate and then these pistons finally extend again, this torch is going to turn off, which is going to retract this piston, moving this observer back over to here, which is going to fire into this piece of obsidian, which is next to this piston. So this piston is obviously going to flash very quickly. It's going to power really quickly. That observer detects the piston arm firing and then fires into this piston, moving our slime box over. And that's it. It's so, so simple. So you can see it moves over when we pay. Brilliant. But when we reset it, you can see it gets moved back over. And surprisingly, that's that build completely done as well. So if you want to, you can cover up our redstone with some flooring blocks. It's up to you. Obviously cover up this redstone too. Cover up your wall, doesn't matter. And that is it completely done. So if we're gonna use it now, we go down and we get shot back up, perfect. But if we place in a diamond into here, then of course it's gonna fire us down into our secret base whatever <laughs> just make sure you do clear out a hole otherwise you are going to get stuck inside a piston which is not good either <laughs> oh yeah and if i don't say it again someone's going to ask if you want to get out of this door just place a button here 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 or here it doesn't matter okay even here there it doesn't matter <laughs> just not here of course because this block is going to get moved <laughs> now if you're making this build i presume you have your base underneath your house that would make sense so if you do then you may want to make this chest go all the way down underneath the ground into your base. And you can just do that by placing hoppers going down like that. So you have it wherever you like. I can't believe I just thought about this now, but if you want to hide the barrel or hide the chest, then you can, of course. Just remove the barrel, remove the hopper underneath that, place a rail on top of this hopper by crouching like that, place a minecart with a hopper on top of it like that. Then make sure you remove that rail, place one of your flooring blocks here, then place a piston like so and then just power that piston like that and then remove it and that's it <laughs> so if you place an item like this throw it down it should get picked up by the minecart hopper and that should go into this chest perfect and then if you grab a diamond and throw it down then it should work i oh, don't know why i didn't think of that before to be honest <laughs> that's a lot better <laughs> i think i might need to lie down now
<laughs> after doing those two tutorials. That's quite a lot, actually. <laughs> Just before we finish, I just need to remind you that next video will be the 100k special. I am so, so excited for that. That's going to be absolutely mad. And of course, the bow tie reveal. Oh, I can't wait. Before we meet again at the 100k special, there's only one thing left for me to say. And that is, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video or like these designs, please give us a like. And if you loved it, make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button for more awesome content. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And I'll see you later. Bye! And thank you so much for 100k. I know I haven't hit it yet, but I'm about to. It's so exciting! <laughs> See you later.